Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges that you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we want to hear from you on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or head to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase the longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. Or you can call 866-735-2470 for more information. Please check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Transdermal Sebalm, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, the award-winning Truth Transdermal C Serum, our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and now our Truth Biomimetic Priming Mist, Biomimetic Mineral Priming Mist, made with folic minerals, plant-derived minerals, and high aluronic acid, which we're going to be talking about here probably, if not today, tomorrow. One of my all-time favorite skin, topical skin ingredients, although... Uh, very misunderstood, as we'll talk about. In any case, got high hyaluronic acid, fulvic minerals, lactate, amino acids in our biomimetic mineral priming mist, along with our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, silicon oil. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking about sugar for the last couple of weeks. Not any sugar, of course, complex sugar, not sucrose. We're conditioned to believe when we hear sugar, most of us are conditioned to just think about table sugar, sucrose, which is uh, technically called sucrose, which is a blend of glucose and fructose, which are two of the essential sugars, although sucrose is certainly not essential. In fact, none of the sugars are technically essential. The body can make them. But they do have some, uh, in fact, they have quite significant health benefits, all of these sugars. That's because of the membrane on the membrane, the membrane that covers the cell membrane, the, the coating. It's not really a membrane. I guess it, the coating, we'll say, that covers the cell membrane. The cell membrane is fatty, and you can eat the cell membrane. They call it me a membrane replacement therapy, Mem uh, lipid lipid membrane replacement therapy, where you eat the membrane, you eat cholesterol, you eat uh, omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, EFAs that is. Uh, what else can you eat when you eat the membrane? You can eat uh, saturated fats. You know, the membrane's got a lot of saturated fat in it. And you can eat nutrients that protect the membrane. Vitamin E protects the membrane. That's one of vitamin E's main roles. In fact, that is vitamin E's main role in the body is to protect the cell membrane. It's like a membrane guardian. And then there are carotenes, which also have membrane protective effects. The reds, the blues, the greens, 
all the colors in the veggies, the pigments, the carotenes and the flavonoids, these phytopigments, they have membrane protection properties. Lecithin is another substance that you can eat if you want to do membrane, membrane replacement therapy. But in the same way that you do membrane replacement therapy by eating the fats, you can also eat the sugars. You can eat the, uh, all of these complex sugars. On our last program, we talked about cordyceps, mushrooms. Mushrooms are a great source of these sugars. In fact, that's what makes mushrooms such a powerful medicinal food, some mushrooms. There's about uh, 10,000 or so mushroom species, and maybe 2,000 of them uh, are uh, nutritional, something like that. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but somewhere along those lines, 2,000 or so uh, nutritional mushrooms. And one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that these nu uh, mushrooms are nutritional is because of the sugars. There's a lot of reasons, actually. Mushrooms are good sources of fiber. Mushrooms are a cross between uh, a, a plant cell, a plant, and an animal. And that's why you get vitamin D in mushrooms, which is kind of interesting. It's the main source of vitamin D or, or, or a good source of vegetarian vitamin D. So mushrooms are kind of like, a, they have like kind of animal quality to them. If you ever go into a room where they're cultivating mushrooms, it's a very strange feeling you'll get if there's a lot of mushrooms. I've, I've done this. I've walked into a room several times where there are lots of mushrooms growing, and there's, it's almost eerie. It's like the mushrooms have a consciousness. And, of course, all cells have a consciousness. But there's something very intelligent about mushrooms. And what it is is they're like a cross between an animal and a plant. They're almost like a, an animal-like plant. Kind of interesting. They've got fiber. They've got vitamin D. They've got minerals. They've got some protein in them. Not a lot. Maybe 10% of, of, uh, of the protein in meat. You can make steaks out of mushrooms, mushroom steaks. That's what vegetarian steaks are, basically. It's a mushroom. It has kind of meaty quality to it. If you're interested in learning more about mushrooms, there's a great book called Healing Mushrooms by a guy named Tero, Ice, Tero, uh, Tero Isocopila. Tero Isocopila. T-E-R-O, last name, Isocopila. I-S-O-K-A-U-P-P-I-L-A. -P -P book's called Healing Mushrooms. And it's, it's got some recipes in there. It's got... Uh, a lot of uh, a breakdown on some of the main mushrooms. Like I say, there's thousands of these of these nutritional mushrooms. Cordyceps, the one we talked about uh, a couple days ago. It's not really a mushroom, actually. It's a fungus. It's not really a mushroom. Mushrooms are a type of fungus, but there's different funguses. Yeast are also fungus, but they're not mushrooms. Uh, but I, I just ha have a thing for cordyceps. I always liked cordyceps. Cordyceps has a reputation for being a very a well a well rounded nutritional sub uh, sub uh, substance. It's good for all kinds of different things, liver issues and kidney issues and skin issues. And um, it's an anti-cancer. It's in a, a very well-known immune booster. It's in Longevity's immune 911 product. Cordyceps is part of the same uh, family, the Ascomyce Ascomycetes family. That's a family of mushrooms. It's the same family that, from which we get truffles and from which we get penicillin and from which we get LSD. LSD is a type of fungus, is secreted by funguses, the hallucinogen, hallucinogen LSD. You get penicillin and you get LSD and you get truffles and you get medicinal properties all from cordyceps. There's hundreds of studies on cordyceps. Cordyceps is gaining reputation over probably starting about 25 years ago. It really got going. Uh, it, it really entered into the public mindset in the 1990s, uh, 1996 Olympics. The uh, Chinese women's Olympic team uh, broke three distance records at the uh, at the world some world championship in Germany world outdoor track and field championship in Germany in the 90s uh, and uh, and then the, uh, a few months later they broke more records in uh, in the Chinese national games and so they st there was this kind of rumor that was going around that they were that they were using performance enhancing drugs because they broke six world records in like two months time which is unheard of in the world of track and field. And so they did all this research and they checked them for banned substances. They never found any banned substances, but it turned out that the Chinese, that the, uh, uh, the coach of the Chinese women's running team, track and field team, was giving the mushroom, was giving cordyceps mushrooms. And he was claiming that the cordyceps were, were helping them break world records. This was an article that was in Newsweek magazine in 19, back in 1993. In any case, it's well known that cordyceps is a stamina-promoting substance, and it's kind of interesting how it works. It works via the respiratory tract, and that means that you can use cordyceps. Well, we'll, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Suspend. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, if you're dealing with high blood pressure or if you're dealing with cardiovascular health issues of any kind, B vitamins and electrolytes are your ticket, and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is loaded with both. B vitamin, as well as vitamin C, all your water-soluble nutrients packed in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It tastes great, great for energy, great if you're dealing with uh, blood sugar problems, especially after you eat a sweet or sugary meal or first thing in the morning when our blood sugar, is, uh, typically our blood sugar is higher first thing in the morning. Using uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine as well as the Sweeties and a uh, few Z, Selenium, all of these are, are anti-blood sugar or, or will lower blood sugar, I should say. You can find uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine as well as all the other fine longevity products and a Join the Team Now link that you could click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team. You can find out uh, all about it at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or by calling the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470-866-735-2470. Okay, so we're talking about polysaccharides, complex sugars. Poly means many, saccharide means sugar. These complex sugars have tremendous health-giving properties, health benefits. Mushrooms are loaded with polysaccharides. Cordyceps, no, cordyceps is not really a mushroom. Cordyceps is technically a fungus. We refer to it generically as a mushroom. It's technically an Entomopathogen. An entomopathogen is a is a substance that feeds off in, a parasite that feeds off insects. Entomology is a study of insects. Entomo means insects in Latin. Pathogen, disease. It causes diseases in bugs. That's what uh, that's the technical classification of cordyceps. It basically eats off of worms. It eats off of the shells of insects. The shells of insects and worms are loaded with polysaccharides. And cordyceps has figured out a way, the fungus called cordyceps has figured out a way to digest those polysaccharides that are in the worms, the coating of worms, or in the uh, caterpillars, I should say, and worms, and also in the uh, shells of insects. It basically digests their sugars and turns it into nutrition. Specifically, it turns it into sugar nutrition. Cordyceps is an adaptogen. It's a stress management substance. It has energizing properties, stamina properties, libido properties, sexual performance properties. It's, uh, improved, it can help improve sexual performance. In an article in uh, February 2013 magazine uh, call, uh, journal called Biotech, Cordyceps is, uh, is said to be a cure for uh, a cure for diarrhea, headaches, cough, rheumatism, and liver disease, and it's actually called Himalayan Viagra presumably for its benefits for treating sexual dysfunction. It's also well known as a pro-respiratory substance. That's how it works for athletic performance. That's how it was improving the, uh, the performance times of uh, the, the Chinese athletes, the Chinese track and field women, Ch Chinese track and field performers or athletes. It improved their respiration. If you have COPD or if you have asthma, or if you have a chronic cough, you might want to consider using cordyceps tea, making yourself a cordyceps tea. You can get cordyceps powder on the internet. Cordyceps powder is used as a nutritional supplement. I personally use it every day or try to use it every day. So if you just take some cordyceps, put it in some uh, boiling water, make yourself a tea, could help you with COPD. You can also make a, a, uh, a steam tent where you put a towel over your head and you, you boil water, basically you boil water, put some cordyceps in there and then put a towel over your head and cover the, the pot. And then the steam that comes up just stays trapped by the towel over your head and you breathe in the cordyceps. It can be good for COPD or respiratory infections. You could put some clove in there or some, a little bit of wintergreen maybe or a little bit of peppermint. And it can really open up your lungs and your airways if you're congested, especially if you have allergies. If you want to go all out, throw in a little mullein powder. Mullein is a really interesting herb that uh, is derived from... Uh, Mullen powder comes from an herb called mullen. Verbascum is the technical name for the mullen plant, also known as lungwort. Mullen has vitamin C in it, flavonoids, other nutritional comp, uh, components. It's antiviral, it's antibacterial. Herbs are just the the medicine that grows between the in, in the cracks of the sidewalk. The medicine that grows in our garden that we call weeds that we pull out 
is absolutely mind blowing. There's all kinds of things you could do with, with weeds, herbs or weeds basically. And there's all kinds of medicinal properties to these things. Mullen, Mullen grows all over here in Colorado. Throw, make yourself a Mullen and Cordyceps steam tent. If you have respiratory problems. How cool is it that nature provides us with all these wonderful, powerful medicines, as well as nutritional compounds? Mushrooms, of course, they, they're, there's no botanical plant that has the power of mushrooms. Mushrooms are, are really incredibly, incredibly powerful. As I say, they're part, they're part bacteria, they're part uh, plant, and they're part uh, animal. Recently, kombucha mushroom, which isn't really a mushroom, kombucha is the byproduct of uh, bacteria and uh, yeast. Yeast is a type of fungus. It's not a mushroom, but it's a type of fungus. And so uh, by letting bacteria and yeast feed on tea leaves, you get this really powerful ex uh, fermented liquid that is excreted by the bacteria and the yeast as they're digesting the tea. And uh, it has some really interesting medicinal properties. Now that you know about all the medicinal properties associated with funguses, now it makes sense why kombucha can be so medicinal and certainly energizing. Also has a little bit of alcohol in it. That probably probably helps kombucha. I remember doing, uh, growing a kombucha mushroom or kombucha ferment, I should say, uh, back in the early 1990s, somebody told me about it and I started doing it and it's kind of interesting. And, and it actually, the fungus that is the, the fungal, the fungus that is, that feeds on the tea, it's actually a tea fungus. The fungus that feeds on a tea, it, it kind of has a sort of living, that, that living quality, that conscious quality that I was talking about earlier with mushrooms is it kind of happens. You kind of have that with the kombucha. If you grow your own, make your own kombucha, everybody should make their own kombucha. Now they have bottles of it that you can drink, make your own kombucha. It's kind of an interesting experience. Another great source of these polysaccharides, these uh, glycocalyx building nutrients is seaweed. And I have been talking about seaweed for years. Seaweed is a true, true power food. It's got protein in it, amino acids in it, essential fatty acids in it, vitamins, minerals, electrolytes. I mean, see, it's hard to underestimate or it's hard to overestimate the importance of seaweed as a nutritional substance. It's basically, basically sea grass and grass and seaweed are the most abundant plants, abundant living things. Well, next to bacteria, they're, I guess you say the most abundant plants on the planet, seaweed and grass. And it turns out that seaweed and grass are also among the most powerful and the most potent Whales live on it. So do uh, uh, elephants. So do uh, um, gorillas. The biggest animals in the world eat seagrass and seaweeds. And there's a reason for it. It's because the stuff is loaded with nutrition. Now, unfortunately, human beings cannot extract that nutrition from grass, which is unfortunate because if we could, uh, we would have lots of food. Actually, we do because cereals are grasses type of grass it's uh, been modified so that it's edible originally originally cereal grasses were not edible when they figured out how to make them edible that's when civilization began when we figured out how to eat grass in the form of cereal which is a whole nother interesting story all right i'm pharmacist ben got lines open for you 844-236-6010 is our number you're listening to the bright side we'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information and you and your phone calls 844-236-6010 is our number we'll be back after this Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com, also brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470 for more info about the longevity products or to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you want to start yourself a longevity business and earn thank you checks associated with having your own business and spreading the word and helping change lives at the most fundamental level there is, the level of good health. If you have noticed or your friends or loved ones have benefited from nutritional supplementation, you want to help spread the word and have a business as well. It's a great way to get into business for yourself for a one-time $25 fee. You can get all your products at the wholesale price. 
even if you don't want to start a business for $25, you can just get your products at the wholesale price. Your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Start Pack, all the Longevity products that we talk about on this program and the ones we don't talk about on this program. There's thousands of Longevity products. Call 866-735-2470 for more information. Our number today, 844-236-6010. We do have lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. From the New England Journal of Medicine, this is really interesting. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is attributed to fructan, not gluten. Hmm, interesting. Some people with celiac disease... Uh, some people without celiac disease, some people without celiac disease, develop abdominal symptoms and nonspecific extra abdominal symptoms. That means like head problems, dizziness, and, and uh, a migraine headache, and confusion, and sluggishness after non-gluten consumption. In other words, you can get these kinds of symptoms, not just digestive symptoms, but also mental health symptoms from eating foods that aren't gluten, eating uh, gluten-free you can go gluten-free, and you can have gluten-like symptoms. Hmm, how interesting is that? <clears throat> I can't tell you how many people I talk to every week who say, well, I'm gluten-free, but I still have arthritis. Well, I'm gluten-free, but I still have um, abdominal pain. Well, because gluten-free is just a, it's a fad. It's a meme. It's a belief. It's, a, it's a, 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 an idea that's been repeated over and over again that we completely lost its meaning. Gluten is just one of a thousand different elements that are found in vegetables and fruits and grains. And one of the worst is, or potentially anyway, not for everybody, but potentially, is fructan. And this is where the FODMAP diet comes from. The FODMAP diet is a diet that eliminates everything in grains, basically, all the sugars in grains, and not just gluten. Fructans are sugars. And the FODMAP diet is a low-sugar diet. FODMAP stands for fermentable oligo, dye, and monosaccharides and polyols, and that includes this stuff called fructan. You may have seen inulin, I-N-U-L-I-N, on your ingredient deck. Inulin's prized as a fiber, but a lot of people have, a problems, have problems with it. Wheat is the main source of uh, inulin. Wheat is actually the main source of fructans that we get. It's for other grains, too. That's why, you know, just if you're having a health problem, try laying off the grains. Not just going gluten-free. Laying off the grains entirely. And onions, by the way, are also a, a rich source of inulin. In fact, onions and garlic, onions and uh, uh, grains are the two biggest sources of fructans in the American diet. Um, garlic has fructans in it. Uh, bananas, actually, bananas can be a big problem for a lot of folks. And bananas are the most popular fruit in in the world. The most, the best selling fruit in the world is bananas. And bananas can be problems for a lot of folks, and people don't even realize it. We could be eating bananas. Oh, I'm eating only organic. Well, it doesn't matter if you have a fructan problem. You're eating a bunch of bananas. You could have a health problem. You have a digestive problem. Oh, but I'm just a vegetarian. I'm a vegan. It doesn't matter. If you're eating onions and garlic and bananas and wheat and grain, you could easily have skin problems that are that look like uh, uh, that, that are come from a digestive health issue. Plants don't want to be eaten. We eat them. We pay the price. It's pretty much as simple as that. Now, does that mean you don't want to eat plants? No, I'm not saying that. There's wonderful nutritional value to plants, obviously. Just talked about herbs in our last segment. And there's wonderful botanicals and vegetation. Or they should form the bulk of our diet. But it's just that you have to be careful and you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention to your symptoms. You can't follow a pre-programmed diet. You have to pay attention to how you feel. There's all these diets out there, the Mediterranean diet and the firehouse diet and the South Beach diet and all these different ways that we're supposed to, the good foods and the bad foods. There's all these different ways we're supposed to eat. I say, see how you feel personally. No good foods and bad foods in general. There's some that are bad for everybody. I, I take that back. And mostly, those are the process, mostly those are the processed foods, like, like potato chips and french fries. But as far as whole foods go, Everybody's going to be reacting differently, and you've got to see how you feel. You've got to go by your symptoms, and don't try to remember things. Write it down in a food diary. Fructan intolerance is a big problem and a real problem, and it can cause all kinds of health issues, especially in the intestine, S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Huge health issue, given that we're all eating lots and lots of these sugars. And you know what else? It could be, it could very well be that 
our gluten intolerance issues problems and our fructose intolerance problems are at least partially related to the fact that we're, we've got these messed up gut bacteria that we've thrown off the balance of the bacteria inside our gut. So if you do have, find yourself not able to do fructan or not able to even do gluten or, or not able to do cereals or not able to do uh, foods that you love, why, try working on your gut for a while. Try laying off the foods that are causing problems and then work on gut health for a while, making sure you're getting lots of fiber and, and probiotics and NAG and fucoidin and these polysaccharides that we've been talking about, these complex sugars that we've been talking about now for uh, the last couple of weeks, these complex sugars soothe and coat the digestive system and heal the digestive system. Start building up the intestine, lay off the, the problematic foods, and then it may be that a month, two months, or three months into uh, rebuilding, the rebuilding process, you may be able to handle fructan, or at least a little bit of it, or you may be able to handle gluten, or at least a little bit. Just give yourself three months to heal. Using fasting, using uh, the, uh, eating the building substances, including mushrooms, by the way, and then uh, and glucosamine, I forgot about that one, and hyaluronic acid, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. Build, a, build up the digestive tract, and then you may be able to handle your, you know, do a little bit of bread here and there, or do a little bit of, uh, do a little bit of pasta, whatever it is, whatever your favorite food is. Not that you absolutely need to have those foods, by the way. All right, from the University of Sydney, dementia diagnosis linked to unnecessary medication use. New, new study finds medication use increases in newly diagnosed dementia patients. New international study led by University of Sydney has found that medication use increases in newly diagnosed dementia patients, particularly unnecessary or inappropriate medications. This is from the Journal of Ger uh, Gerontology, Medical Sciences. It was a, long, a study of nearly 2,500 people conducted in collaboration with Yale University. Yes, dementia is a brain issue that can not only be caused by drugs, it can be exacerbated by drugs. That's something we don't, even, we don't think about when we talk about side effects. It's, that's not going to show up as a side effect. But what ends up happening is when you're on medication, your body just simply, it, it poisons the body. The body breaks down. The brain is using nutrients more than any other system in the body. And these same nutrients have to be, are, are used by the body to clear out your medication. You run into nutritional deficiencies and then secondary diseases that don't show up as side effects from medication. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with your phone calls right after this break. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844 236 6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, lots of lines open for you. And let's go to Virginia and say good morning to Dorian. Good morning, Dorian. How you doing, buddy? Hi, I'm doing well, thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, um, I was just going somewhere more quiet. Cause okay. What's going on today? How you doing um, in Virginia? Well, Where are you in Virginia, by the way? Alexandria. Okay, nice. Yeah. All right, so what's, what's going on? Virginia. Well, my mom hasn't been sleeping very well. No? She doesn't sleep in the night too well. And I, I said, if there's anyone that might be able to help, it would be you. So I okay. How old's that. your mom? How old, how old is your mom? She is 59. 59. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any health challenges, any medication, anything like that? No, she's on nothing. Nothing, good. Um, how you to wait? She like about, about, I don't know, just, yeah, about. 5'3 and 130 pounds, I would say. Okay, all right, so she's in reasonably good health. So here's the deal, a couple things. First of all, as we get older, our cortisol levels naturally go up. Cortisol is your body's mm -hmm. stress hormone. You probably know that. So mm -hmm. it could be, a, and this is one of the reasons why older folks, it's not unusual for people when they get older to have problems sleeping. So uh, keeping the cortisol balanced, keeping the cortisol low is a great strategy. A little bit of protein before you go to bed sometimes helps. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you run into hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, and this is especially true if you wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. If your low blood sugar, cortisol goes up. So keeping your, uh, if you go into hypoglycemic states, low blood sugar states, um, uh, your cortisol will spike. Using melatonin can help balance out cortisol. Uh, vitamin E and A may be helpful 
for balance out cortisol, certainly essential fatty acids. I'd be using those. And then also there's other, you know, there's non-nutritional, non-medicinal strategies for falling asleep. You can use uh, other nutrients, by the way, magne- magnesium, GABA, uh, glycine, theanine. These are all nutrients that can help people fall asleep. Um, then there's the non, uh, non-nutritional or non-medical ways that you can, uh, strategies that you can use. Personally, when, if I can't fall asleep, I just watch my breath. And watching your breath or watching any of your body rhythms will help you fall asleep. If you're thinking a lot, here's a trick for you. If you're thinking a lot, a lot of times people, you know, they, their mind chatters away. And this is a great meditation strategy, too, if you find that you think too much to be able to meditate. But it's great for if you're falling asleep. Try, <clears throat> when you're thinking thoughts, try taking the words away from your thoughts. This is kind of an interesting little trick. Can you see what happens when you take the words away from your thoughts, Dorian? Try it right now. What happens when you take what happens when you take the words away from you stop thinking, right? Yes. Do you notice that you can't think without words? So if right. you can take if you can take the words away from your thoughts, if you can figure out how to do that and watch your breath at the same time, that's like an instant way to fall asleep. Or if you're a meditator, if you want to meditate, it's an instant way to, to go into meditation. And by the way, that's one of the benefits of learning to meditate is you fall asleep much faster. Not only does learning to meditate help you with your, with your autonomic nervous system, that is things like blood pressure and, and heart rate and the digestive system, these, these uh, parts of the body that are usually regulated without our consciousness, it turns out that meditation helps you regulate those, helps you get control over those parts of your body. Meditation makes you more aware of subconscious parts of your brain, subconscious motivations, things that you, reasons that we do our, do our actions. And then uh, meditation also has wonderful health, uh, uh, real physical, tangible health benefits like helping you fall asleep faster. So that's another thing that you could do. And then another thing also is uh, if she's not exercising, exercising during the day is a great way to help get you some, help you not necessarily fall asleep faster, but help you get deeper sleep. So there's a bunch of good strategies there for you. Yes. Anything else? She, she tries to remain active during the day. Yeah. But, um, what does she do? Is she, is she working? To maybe is she work- a little bit. Is she working? She, she does work, but she does retailing online. Like, okay, that's not going to get her much. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, not what does she retail? Activity. You want to give her a, give her a plug? You want to give her give her business a yeah. plug? <laughs> like, sorry? What's her, what's, give her a plug. Give her business a plug. What's the business? Um, well, she d- does the um, supplement um, retailing and all that stuff. Y- is she longevity? Um, she, she does another company. But um, I told her about Young Jeopardy, and and I she, guess she will be looking into that as well. She does I another multi level company. Yes. Which one? It works pretty much the same way. I, I think. Which it's, which it's which multi level company? Which one? Nature Sunshine. Nature Sunshine. Nature. What is that? Mm-hmm. What is Nature Sunshine? I am. I'm not You're not sure. sure of their origins, but um, they they do supplements as well, and. Well, tell her to uh, give me give me a shout one day on the radio, and we'll uh, yeah. and we'll get her into some longevity have stuff. I will speak to you directly. <laughs> yeah, I have her talk. Send an email, Ben at ksco dot com, and we'll talk mm-hmm. to her, and we'll talk to her about uh, about longevity. All right. Okay. Anything else, buddy? That I think that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll round okay. it off there. Oh, All right, my, good. Um, I got the name of my um, omega three. It's um, omega three. Um, Ethyl esters. Omega three what? Ethyl esters. Ethyl esters. Oh, that's the drug. Yeah. That's the omega three yeah. drug. Yeah. yeah. So omega three mm-hmm. ethyl esters. How much did you pay? Oh, you you pay for it. You had your your insurance company pay for it. You didn't yeah. pay for it. Yeah. It goes for about a hundred. Yeah, a copy. But I don't yeah. take it anymore. Ever since I spoke to you. Yeah, I just take the, use the young Jeffrey you want. Exactly. Uh, the drug you're talking about, and I haven't checked lately, but when it first came out, it was like $130 or $140. It came out about, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. And all it is is a, a patented version. It's a, it's a classic example of how drug companies will take things that work and then patent them and then sell them to your doctor. Not to you, to your doctor. Not to the pharmacy, but to your doctor. The drugs get sold to the doctors. Drug, there's a reason why drug reps, drug reps really only rarely call on pharmacies. I don't even know if they do that anymore, but they call on doctors always because the, and they don't call on patients because the doctors are how they drive their business. And the doctors typically don't understand how drugs work. So they're easy pickings. 
It's like shooting fish in a barrel to, for a drug company to go to a doctor's office because most drug doctors aren't hip to how these things work. And they get uh, they go and tell them about how how the uh, I forgot the name of the brand name of the drug you're talking about, which is F, which is just a tweaked version of omega three fatty acids. And they go and say, well, we tested our drug and it dropped heart attacks incidents by five percent and it uh, increased or uh, decreased hospital stays by this and this percent, blah, 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 blah. And they don't tell you that it, it, it's no better than <laughs> omega three fatty Fatty acids from fish oil. It's just that it's mm-hmm. their patented version, their patented molecule. It's just it's such a nasty business. All right, Dorian, I want to get one more call in, buddy. Alrighty, bye-bye. All right, okay. take care. Bye-bye. Got one more call here. Oh, okay. All right, well, never mind. Then we won't take that call. All right, and that's all the time we have. And uh, we just won't take any more calls. So tomorrow we'll continue talking about sugars. We'll talk about uh, my favorite of the sugars. It's actually not technically sugar. It's a protein sugar complex called high aluronic acid. If you're a woman out there, you've obviously, uh, no doubt, have you heard about high aluronic acid either as a topical ingredient for uh, used in skincare products, they advertise it a lot, or as something called Juvederm, which is injected high aluronic acid. You're not going to get the benefits of high aluronic acid, the real benefits of high aluronic acid by coating your skin with it in a product or even by injecting it. Although I will say that if you inject it, you'll get a plump and that's one of hyaluronic acid's main roles, is to plump things. You're not going to get the plumping effects, uh, the good plumping effects by using it in a cream. If you want hyaluronic acid benefits, you got to eat hyaluronic acid, and that's spelled, by the way, H-Y-A-L-U-R-O-N-I-C, hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is very important for skin health and for beautifying the skin and for youthifying the skin. In fact, I have a new connective tissue building supplement that should be out here. Uh, hopefully in the next four to eight weeks, which is going to feature high aluronic acid. And that's the way you get your high aluronic acid. You eat it, either in a supplemental form, or of course you can get it uh, from most fruits and vegetables because high aluronic acid is one of those wonderful glycocalyx building substances. In fact, it's it's not just a part of the glycocalyx, it's part of the stuff the glycocalyx is embedded in, and arguably this makes high aluronic acid the most important, the most significant of the healthy polysaccharide proteoglycan blends that we've been talking about. High hyaluronic acid is a key uh, component of the extracellular matrix that not only makes your skin soft and fluffy and, and puffy and youthful looking, but also makes the interior part of your body full and bulky the way you are, with, the, the way you are when you're younger. If you're uh, uh, noticing that your skin is thinning or your bones are thinning or you're getting frailer as you age, hyaluronic acid may be something that you want to use as a supplement. We'll be talking about that tomorrow on The Bright Side. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're looking for super, super, mega premium skin health products, no preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, thickeners, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, you look no further than truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.